Good afternoon. Can everybody hear me? All right, great. Good afternoon. I'm Jessica Parker, Deputy COO from the Mayor's Office. And we are 14 days out from hosting the NFL Draft here in our great city. Yes, that's exciting. And today we want to make sure our residents and visitors are excited and informed about how to come down to the draft. So the people behind me have been putting in a lot of hard work behind the scenes for nearly a year to make sure we provide the best options for you to come down. The group of people here will go through a slide presentation and make sure that everything is accurate and the information is provided to all of you. And we also want to thank our media partners for coming out and making sure that this information gets to the public, to the visitors, the residents, and everyone that wants to come down. We don't want anyone to be left behind or left on the sidelines or have fear about coming down to the draft. I am personally excited about this day as we get closer to hosting this great event. And right now I have the pleasure of introducing the Lions' number one fan and our great mayor, Mayor Duggan. Yes, if you remember the quarterback battles of Carl Sweetan and Milt Plum, you really are uh, the Lions' uh, biggest fan. Uh, this, this is about to be uh, an experience, and the media has done such an extraordinary job of talking about it. Uh, we have got expectations, and today we want to make sure uh, we set those expectations. People have never experienced it. Somebody yesterday said to me, why are you guys building a pavilion? Why don't you just do it in Ford Field? I said, Ford Field holds 60,000 people. We're going to see 300,000 people down here on Thursday night. Uh, we don't have a sense of the magnitude of this. Uh, and if you're used to going to a Lions game or a Beyonce concert, I get down an hour and a half, two hours early. I park three or four blocks away and I walk. That's not going to work. Okay? That will not get you in because this is going to be, I think, similar to those who can remember the fireworks in their heyday, when if you weren't here by very early afternoon, you had no hope of driving into downtown. Uh, I will predict that by noon or 1 o'clock, uh, everything down here will be full. And so what we are saying to folks is, you're going to need to think about an experience that's different than you're used to going to a football game. Uh, and unless you're going to be here at 9 or 10 in the morning, the idea of driving into downtown and parking is probably not realistic. But we've got six options for you, and we want you to look at what those six options are. One is uh, we have fan shuttles. We have park and ride sites. You can park your car, and the van will drive you down. You have queue line shuttles. You can park your car. Uh, ride down on the queue line. We have smart shuttles all the way out to the suburbs. You can park your car there. Of course, DDOT has its ridership. Uh, Uber and Lyft are available. I went to the Las Vegas and the Kansas City uh, drafts, went every single day, took Uber and Lyft rides. Uber and Lyft took you to the perimeter of the crowd, dropped you off, and then you walked quite a ways, but it worked fine. And of course, those of you who are fortunate enough, you might have a friend drive you down to the perimeter where you're going and pick you up later. Uh, that is what we are trying to do is show people all the choices. And when you get here, you'll find you cannot move from east to west because it's going to be fenced off. You want to go from Capitol Park to Greektown. I think a lot of folks here are going to discover something called the Detroit People Mover uh, because the way to move around downtown for these three days is not going to be to try to push through the crowd for blocks at a time. It's going to be to locate your people mover site. If you want to join friends on the other side, that's going to be the fastest way to get there. I want to keep cautioning. I hope the media will keep helping us in explaining this. I don't know what we got. Something like 300,000 people have downloaded your NFL One Pass. So we got folks thinking, I got my pass. I got a ticket inside. There's maybe 50,000 spots inside the fence. And of those, maybe 10,000 can actually see the stage. The other 290,000 visitors, you're going to experience the draft with your friends from all the other cities on a TV screen in some location downtown. If you want to get here really early, you can get inside the fence. You want to go to the fan experience with your kids and, and play the football games. You can get in and get in the, 
the uh, inside the, the NFL fan zone. But most people here are going to experience the draft on the streets of downtown. Look carefully at our activation sites. If you're coming from the east side, you can go to Greektown, you can go to Paradise Valley, you can go to Eastern Market. There'll be TVs and uh, celebrations. If you're coming from the north, you can go to Grand Circus Park. If you're coming in from the west, you can go to Beacon Park uh, or you can go to Capitol Park. And when you figure the people mover out, you can find out you can go largely from one side to the other. It's going to involve some walking. But those who truly enjoy this are going to enjoy it because they discover uh, these neighborhoods of Detroit. And so uh, the media has been absolutely terrific in your coverage so far. But we've got to start to explain to people, if you think your experience is going to a Lions game, this isn't it. You're going to have to get here in a different way. You're going to have to get here earlier, and uh, you're going to have to navigate your way uh, among the activation sites. That's the basic uh, approach, and the guy who actually knows all the details of all of the transportation offices is our uh, transportation expert, Sam Krasenstein. Sam? Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Sam Krasenstein. I'm the, the city's chief of infrastructure. So I'm going to run through a lot of the details that Mayor Duggan started to, started to lay out here for all the great ways to come down to the city during the draft. So the draft runs Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. The hours for the draft Thursday and Friday are basically the same. The gates open at 12, and on Saturday it opens up a little bit earlier, starting at 9 a.m. Uh, we have two really great free public transportation options right in our backyard in the downtown. We have one, the Detroit People Mover, which I actually took to get here for this press conference and is, is truly great and an underutilized asset that people should really be using more. Uh, during the draft, the People Mover is going to be running 24-hour service with trains coming every five minutes, and it takes you right next to the entrance locations. Now, for the draft, there's three ways to get inside the footprint, all on the southern part of the perimeter. So if you see these yellow arrows here, these are your three ways in. One is at, Larn or at Jefferson and Griswold. Two is by uh, Jefferson and Randolph. And three is by Cadillac Square here. The People Mover takes you right next to two of these entrances in literally less than a two-minute walk away. So it's extremely convenient. The other option is to take the queue line. So for people who are thinking about parking a little bit further away, it's a really great option to take the queue line down Woodward and drop you right outside Little Caesars Arena, where you'll be able to walk down Woodward right past the Fox Theater where the prospects will be coming out, as well as through the Grand Circus Park where our partners at DDP are going to put together a terrific draft in the deactivation for some of those people that choose to be outside of the fence line. So I really want to thank our partners at SMART for the park and ride program that they put together throughout Metro Detroit. So SMART has just done a terrific job in identifying locations all throughout Metro Detroit in Wayne, Oakland, and Macomb County that take you right directly into the draft footprint uh, from all of these great locations up on the screen, all for the, the, you know, the great rate and bargain of only $2, where you can park at one of these places, take a bus in, and not have to worry about dealing with parking or traffic at all downtown. We also have our great partners at the RTA for people coming a little bit further away with their D2A2 service from Ann Arbor and people coming from out of town over by Metro Airport that you can take the bus right down here and it drops you in a great convenient location right next to, um, right next to the people mover station and really close to both the DDP activation areas and the draft footprint. So for people that are trying to get downtown, we have the queue line which we talked about and we can see the road closure area in blue. Uh, the best option for people coming down is to take advantage of one of the park and ride options. So the smart option I talked about earlier is great, but we also have Q-Line who has set up a partnership with lots in the new center area for only $5. You can park in one of those lots, hop on the Q-Line, and come directly down Woodward into downtown. The next option we have is the fan shuttle program where we've set up with our partners, Wayne State, uh, Michigan Central and GM on identifying three lots that you can park at where we'll be providing round-the-clock service buses and shuttles to take you from those lots right into the draft footprint all at very affordable rates and convenient locations. Now if you, choose, if you do choose to drive downtown you can do that but you should know parking is going to be very limited downtown and we recommend that you arrive very early. If you're set on parking in the, in the CBD in the Central Business District you can do that. 
We recommend that you get here two hours before the gates open and try to get here by 10 a.m. We've seen a lot of these lots are already starting to be reserved, and so you should definitely prepay your parking. Don't try to just wing it, drive down here, and find a, lot, find a space in a lot, because you're not going to be successful doing that early afternoon during the draft days. We'll also be restricting on-street parking in much of this area, and we'll be strictly enforcing people who are choosing to park illegally in the downtown. So please don't think that that's an option where you can come down, park illegally, take a ticket, and there not be real consequences. Now, there are other options. You can choose to park a little bit further away, and you can arrive a little bit later. These lots are still going to be probably pretty pricey, uh, and we still recommend prepaying for those lots to be able to come downtown. Now, if you're arriving a little bit later, definitely look at taking advantage of our fan shuttle options. Um, we do have prepay available for people who choose to do that. Um, but for if you are choosing to come down a little bit later, you're coming down after work, you should still come down. You're just going to have to park a little bit further away in this blue area up here where there's still a ton of great ways to come down. You can take the queue line, you can hop on a scooter, you can grab a MOGO. There's a ton of great ways to go from all of these areas around downtown and around the neighborhoods to come into the downtown footprint. So to recap that, because that's a lot of information, there's basically three ways for coming down. Your best option is to take advantage of the park and ride program through Smart and Q-Line. Your, your equally good option is to take advantage of the fan shuttles at either the, the Bagley Mobility Hub over by Michigan Central, our partners up at Wayne State with some of the structures up there, and then the GM River East Garage, of which we have a lot of spaces that are extremely convenient locations. And if you do choose to drive downtown, you can, but you, should, you need to plan ahead and you need to arrive early if you have your heart set on doing that. So what else do you need to know? So from a traffic perspective, we have two main roads that are closed. Jefferson is going to be closed from the Lodge to Randolph, and Woodward is going to be closed from Jefferson all the way up to 75. What that means is, if you're going to the west side of the city, you need to come in from the west side, like from the lodge. If you're going to the east side of the city, you have to come in off 375. The last exit for the lodge is going to be West Jefferson. Uh, the Larned exit is going to be closed off, and coming right up onto East Jefferson downtown under Huntington Place will also be closed for this. If you're going to the tunnel, the tunnel is going to remain open 100% of the time. To get to the tunnel, you're going to have to go through 375 down to Jefferson to be able to go back and forth from Windsor through the tunnel. We're also encouraging people, even if you've been down here you know, your entire life, you work down here every day, you come down for every Tigers game, definitely take a look at Google Maps and ways to know what roads are closed and what detours, because the way to get around might be a little bit different than what you're used to. Uh, we're also encouraging people, make sure you download the NFL One Pass app, visit the Visit Detroit website to find all the latest in information. Um, in addition to that, we have a ton of other ways to get around. We have, uh, we're working with Uber and Lyft on having designated rideshare points throughout the entire downtown in convenient locations where you'll be dropped off in an area close to the footprint in an area that's easy for the rideshare drivers to operate. We obviously have the People Mover, which we've talked about and is great. Uh, and then we have a ton of bike and scooter options. So we have MOGO, which has very convenient bike share locations throughout the entire city. And we're working with the scooter providers on, number one, setting up a geofence. So you won't be able to just ride a scooter into the perimeter. You're only going to be able to take it to one to two blocks away. But something really cool we're doing is we're setting up valet stations with the scooter companies. So there's a nice, easy location if you're choosing to take a scooter in from, let's say, Corktown. You can bring that scooter in and you can drop it off at the valet station and not have to worry about it. Um, for those in larger groups with private shuttles, buses, and coaches, you can do that too if you're coming down with a large group. We've worked with our partners at GM and we've set up a, a drop-off point right on the south side of the, of the Renaissance Center of the Winter Garden. And then if you are, are coming down and you need additional services for you know, mobility and ADA, you can be dropped off on the north side of the Renaissance Center, right in the horseshoe that is literally a two-minute walk from the Jefferson Randolph entrance. So a ton of great options. So key takeaways here. Um, number one, have a plan for how you're coming downtown. Number two, ar arrive early, especially if you have your heart set on being in the perimeter and seeing the, uh, seeing the draft theater directly. And number three, download the OnePass app and root for the Lions when they do their draft pick. Uh, quick summary of the tips, try a park and ride option, uh, take advantage of the great public transit options that we have here through Smart, RTA, DDOT, Qline, and the People Mover. Book your parking ahead of time because a lot of stuff is already starting to book up. Take advantage of Google Maps and Waze to know how you're going to get down there. 
And last but not least, no matter how you're coming in, there's going to be a lot of walking and a lot of stuff to see. So dress comfortably, wear good shoes, and get ready for the weather. Um, but that's it. So thank you, everyone, so much for, for coming. Um, and I will hand it back off to Jessica Parker. Thank you, Sam. I know that was a lot of information. And at the end, you'll get a chance to ask your questions. So now we want to bring up General Manager Dwight Farrell from SMART. And if you are coming from the suburbs, we are encouraging you to use the SMART bus. Dwight, you want to give us more information on that? Good morning. Uh, I'd like to first of all thank the mayor and his team for the leadership in this effort. Uh, it's been great. It's been an interesting two years, but it's still been great. Uh, Sam has covered really, for the most part, our locations. I will just br briefly talk about, I want to thank the Smart family for all of the work that they did in coordinating and planning and finding park and ride locations. Thank our, our county execs from Oakland, Macomb, and Wayne County, and our board for their support uh, in giving us the resources that we needed in order to be able to do that. And it's certainly a delight to be able to coordinate with the People Mover and DDOT and the Q-Line to move people around this region. That being said, as was stated earlier, SMART's the way to go. SMART moves us. So this map you can find at smartmovesus.org. We will also have the hours. And so much to, to play into what Sam spoke about, we will be running shuttles from those 11 locations starting Thursday at 9 a.m. and running every hour until 3 p.m. We're going to do that Wednesday, I mean, excuse me, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. And it's going to drop you off at the Fort Cass uh, People Mover Station, and you're good to go. Now, to go home, because the, obviously that's equally important, uh, is there's at the Bricktown location, that's where you'll catch the bus to be able to go back. And we'll also be running buses every hour going back on Thursday and Friday until 11.30 p.m. and Saturday until 3.30. So I, again, am, am thankful to, to have the opportunity to work with the city. And I also want to uh, give a special shout out to the bus operators at SMART, the bus operators uh, at DDOT and the mechanics at both of those. They are the ones who ultimately are going to make it happen because they're the ones that are going to have to do the driving and the one to maintain the vehicles. And so I appreciate their efforts uh, and both of those ATU uh, locals and their leadership for helping us in this. And with that, I'll turn it back over to you. Thank you. So who here has ridden the people mover? What about lately? So we have done a lot of improvements on the People Mover. So we have a lot in store for the fans that are coming out and that will use the People Mover. And we have General Manager Robert Kramer here to tell us all about it. Thank you. Uh, I know we're all in final countdown mode, but it's very exciting to be here today to share and talk about the hard work that's been going on uh, behind the scenes for months. The mayor and his team, all the supporting agencies and stakeholders, have a vision to make this draft unlike any hosted before. In setting uh, the stage, the experience, the draft in the D sites downtown, and the awesome activations in neighborhoods, all part of a great time to show what Detroit and our region is all about. As part of this team effort, the People Mover is up to the challenge. Appreciate the boost from Jessica. Uh, we reopened post-pandemic nearly two years ago. And this event has been uh, serve to focus our energy to showcase a revived and updated system. More trains and service, station technology upgrades, free fares all year thanks to our sponsors at Priority Waste have seen our ridership more than double, 120% increase over last year so far and it's continuing to grow, so very excited. Our trains are the best way to connect all around downtown, whether you're staying downtown, taking one of the transit providers you're hearing about today, or driving and parking in the area. Starting at 7 a.m. on Thursday of draft day, we're gonna start our service. We'll be running 24 hours till late in the evening on Sunday. We'll have trains every five minutes throughout the day and even uh, eight minutes uh, between arrivals, even in the middle of the night. In coordination with the citywide safety and security efforts, our combined team of transit police and security will be visible in and around the system, patrolling and assisting with crowd movements around the area. Up on the 13 platforms with no traffic, and great views of the city, 
Our new digital TV screens will show real-time uh, arrival information for the next couple of trains, which is something that's uh, new for us, just turned on today. Uh, and like the Lions draft picks and a lot of the other improvements you're hearing about, these will be here to stay well after the draft is over. So very excited about those. Uh, for our team, what will get Detroiters to the goal line is connectivity. So DDOT, Smart, Q-Line, uh, MOGO, the RTA, and parking shuttles you heard about all connect and join to the people mover in forming a public transit network uh, that's up to the challenge. Whether it's the new uh, DAX Express bus to the airport run by the RTA, the Q Lines park and ride we've heard about up Woodward, smart adding suburban park and ride routes, and DDOT's citywide route network, we connect them all. And I want to especially thank all of the DTC staff who take great pride in the service that we provide around downtown. We were built for this moment uh, and glad to be part of the team to get, make part of a positive experience in downtown Detroit and across the city. So remember, once you get downtown, come on and take a free ride with us. Walk right through the gates and we'll take you to your fun. So thank you. Thank you. Claude Molinari is Detroit's biggest fan and he's been working alongside Mayor Mike Duggan. He is the President and CEO of Visit Detroit, and he is coming up to talk to us about how Detroit will shine during draft days. Thank you, Jessica. In 14 days, hundreds of thousands of football fans will get to see firsthand what makes Detroit a global leader in innovation and culture. Visit Detroit is so proud to work with Mayor Duggan and the city to ensure every Detroiter, Metro Detroiter, and visitor can participate in this historic event. That is why we are so thoughtful in our planning for parking and transportation. It will be crowded this week in Detroit, but that is a privilege of being a city that does big things and makes a global impact. We can be proud that Detroit is that city, and we plan on showcasing how great our city is and our community is during this draft. Whether you come to the draft on Thursday, Friday, or Saturday, the key to having a successful experience comes down to three things. Plan ahead by downloading the NFL One Pass today, arrive early, and use transit options. All the information you need to have a seamless experience can be found on visitdetroit.com. The NFL Draft is free to attend and it will be the largest and most inclusive sporting event the state of Michigan has ever hosted. This will be a party that everyone will want to attend. In addition to the excitement of the draft, there will be great music, great food, and exciting NFL experiences that the whole family can enjoy. We can't wait to see you all in Detroit. Jessica. Mayor. All right, anybody got any questions? It, it is. Uh, it's just remarkable. I mean, every place I go in the country, uh, people are talking about coming to Detroit. Uh, and city council this week is going to pass on a new convention hotel. And there are a lot of major conventions in this country that will not consider your city if you do not have a convention hotel attached to the convention center. The momentum is just going to keep uh, building. Uh, and Chief White, the Detroit Police Department, are uh, uh, working overtime. I want to thank the men and women of uh, uh, the police department. I, Commander, I think we canceled everybody's vacation and leave uh, uh, for three days. Uh, and, and DPD is pitching in. And, uh, but this is going to be the biggest event we've seen in many, many years. Mayor Duggan, yeah. so are you nervous about anything? And I know you want us to glance out to everybody, but likely only 10,000 people will get their eyes on that stage. Anything people feel like the, the only thing I'm nervous about is the weather and we can't control it. Uh, but no, I, I've been to these drafts. The drafts I was at, 80% of the people couldn't see the stage. Uh, but you've got folks in their jerseys from 32 cities, everybody getting along because they're convinced their draft choice is going to be Tom Brady and their franchise is taking off. Uh, nobody's losing a game. It is a great experience. And people who go to Eastern Market or Beacon Park and hang out and watch the draft picks are going to have a ball. And I'm confident of that. Uh, the only thing we can't control is the weather. Yeah. Um, so you mentioned the stage area, maybe like 10,000 people can get in. Can you talk about who can get in? Is it for 
So the NFL has a process. There are, I don't know, 2,500 or so seats that are reserved, and they're divided up among the 32 cities, and the NFL issues those tickets. After that, you stand behind on a first-come, first-served basis, and you can see in. Now, when I was in Las Vegas, they had so few people that the NFL people were, like, huddling us to stand behind the stage so the TV shot looked really amazing. In Kansas City, it was amazing. Everybody showed up, uh, and they were behind there. And so what the NFL wants is that great shot uh, coming out of uh, the stage area. But then, of course, you're going to bend all the way down Woodward Avenue. You're down Woodward Avenue. You can't see the stage. But you're going to have, as I can tell you, having been there, just as great a time hanging out with your friends and people from other cities. As long as you can see a TV and hear the picks. Now, all of our bars and restaurants will have the TVs on, uh, the picks on. It's going to be, a lot of them are already being reserved for parties. Other ones, people are going to show up at 8 in the morning and start drinking. Uh, that's just the way it's going to be. Well, you know, we have an outstanding uh, police department. And you saw last year, Taylor Swift, Grand Prix, you were one event after another, fireworks without incident. Uh, we have deployed 60 of all metal detectors throughout downtown. And I think by now everybody understands, at least those who have been down know how it works. Uh, if you've got your concealed carry permit, when the officer says to you, uh, you got a gun under your jacket, you show your permit, every CPL holder knows they have that permit, and you're fine. Otherwise, we will catch the illegal weapons. Now, inside the NFL fan zone, that's controlled by the NFL. They don't allow any weapon of any type at all, and that'll be a different point. But we're going to respond, and, and I'm just going to keep saying to Detroiters, if you see trouble brewing uh, between a Bears fan and a Packers fan, don't intervene. Go get a cop. Uh, and, and our officers will uh, attempt to defuse it quickly. Yeah. Uh, so you guys want to talk about where the projection screens are? So um, both in, in all the activation parks from Greektown to, to uh, um, Corktown, but then also on Woodward Avenue, Capitol Park, Grand Circus Park, uh, Harmony Park, we're going to have large screen videos so that wherever you are in the draft footprint, you're going to have a full view of the stage, just as if you were like right in that main area. Is it, didn't, didn't Verizon guarantee us uh, they were going to have the cell service working? Yeah, I could like talk to this. Go ahead. So throughout the downtown, uh, the cell phone providers have been making a ton of upgrades in the infrastructure, both permanent and temporary throughout the downtown. So not just Verizon, but all the providers have been installing new 5G sites that are going to be here long after the draft is behind us. But for the surge of people that are going to be down here, Verizon's also installing two huge cell towers, one in Cadillac Square and one in Hart Plaza, so that's going to make sure that everyone's down here can get connected, they can do social media, they can stream the event to their friends that don't have the opportunity to come to Detroit. So we're really not worried about connectivity for, for anyone down here. That's him. Yeah, so um, we have we do have our colleagues from uh, Tourism Windsor that, that are here, um, but it's going to be very easy for people coming over the border, coming from Windsor, uh, and even further east than that. So we know we're likely to get a lot of people from Buffalo uh, coming out to Detroit that likely will be coming through that way as well. Both the Ambassador Bridge and the tunnel will be open during completely during the draft and the you know time before and after, and it's going to be very easy to access. So even though that Jefferson Avenue is going to be closed and that you know you won't be able to approach it from the lodge, it's going to be very easily accessible. We've been working with the tunnel, working with Customs Border Patrol, so that on both sides of the border we know what to expect for all the fans from all the great fans over in Windsor that we know are equally supportive of the Lions as the Detroiters here. Okay, anything else? Yes. <laughs> uh, so I got to go over and take a look at it myself and experience it driving at a 94. Uh, Brad Dick, is Brad here? So, so Brad is our tremendously ambitious general services director, and he said, 
I want to do something besides the boring welcome to Detroit signs. I want to do this sign. I said, sure, Brad, I'm more interested in you getting the trash up off the freeway. I didn't really focus on it until about a month ago. I saw a post on Instagram of a spectacular Hollywood sign. I called Brad. I said, that's terrific. I had no idea you were thinking that big. He says, that's a fake post. Some guy at Instagram just made it up. That's not our plan. I said, Brad, you got a problem. People are going to think the fake post is the real Detroit sign. He says, no, no, Mayor, you don't really understand social media. People don't confuse fake posts with real life. Uh, well, yesterday, I get an email from some procurement director in New Jersey demanding I fire the procurement staff because they didn't get delivered the sign that we ordered. I'm like, what is she talking about? I showed the link. They're circulating the fake post under what we got and claiming that the city of Detroit didn't deliver uh, what, we, uh, what we promised. So uh, I guess Brad will learn about uh, being ambitious and trying to do something uh, uh, special. Uh, but I, I applaud the ambition of doing something a cut above uh, the boring sign. And uh, I think if he hadn't uh, been uh, uh, judged against that extraordinary uh, artist on, on Instagram, he'd have done fine. All right, thank you guys very much.